Alcohol is part of cultures all over the globe and has been for centuries. So it can't be that bad for you, right? Here, I'll break down what actually happens to your body when you drink a glass of wine every night, plus answer some commonly asked questions about alcohol. How much alcohol should you be drinking? The Dietary Guidelines for Americans defines moderate alcohol consumption as one to two drinks max per night. So one standard drink is defined as five ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, or one and a half ounces of liquor. To see how your typical glass lines up, maybe try measuring out five ounces and seeing how it looks in your usual glass. Also note that restaurant pours are typically larger than a standard five ounces, so just something to be mindful of when you're out. I'm sure many of us know that alcohol is not something where more is better. Besides your standard hangover, there are several negative effects that can happen from excessive alcohol consumption, like dehydration, weakened immune health, added strain on your heart, and even increased risk for certain types of cancers. And saving up all seven of your drinks for the weekend won't do you any favors either. Studies have actually found that binge drinking like this can greatly increase your risk of alcohol use problems later in life. So try sticking to one to two drinks a night max, or maybe try skipping alcohol altogether if that's problematic for you. So what happens to your body when you drink a glass of wine every night? you might have less stress and better mental health. You've probably heard of the anecdotal effects of having a glass of wine to come down after a long day, but what you might not know is there's actually science to back that up. An antioxidant found in wine called resveratrol is found to have anti-stress effects by blocking enzymes in the brain that can lead to depression and anxiety-like behaviors. Another review of research found that moderate alcohol consumption remember, one to two drinks max a night, led to a 32% reduced risk of depression. Plus, feeling less stressed could help boost your mood and make it easier to socialize. Studies have found that regular social time could significantly reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Your heart might be healthier. Thanks to that antioxidant resveratrol, wine has been touted as heart healthy for years. And there actually is some science to back that up. Antioxidant compounds in wine might help lower inflammation levels and in turn, lower the risk of plaque in your arteries, coronary heart disease, and stroke. Studies have also found that regular wine consumption might help improve cholesterol and blood pressure levels. All that said, excessive alcohol consumption can be really damaging to your heart. So the name of the game is keeping it at that beneficial moderate level if you do drink. Your gut health could improve. Your gut contains hundreds of trillions of microbes and they play a role in the health of your entire body, from how we digest food and use it as fuel, to our immune health and our cancer risk. Studies have found that red wine drinkers might have a more diverse microbiome than those who drank different types of alcohol. Researchers attributed this to the antioxidants found primarily in the grape skin, namely resveratrol. It might affect your cancer risk. Regular wine consumption might lower your risk of certain types of cancer while increasing your risk for other types. One study found that regular red wine consumption might be protective against certain gastric, renal, and thyroid cancers. But the same study found that moderate alcohol consumption could lead to a greater risk of pancreatic, prostate, and breast cancers. So more research is needed to clarify the effects of alcohol on your cancer risk. But note that excessive alcohol consumption is strongly associated with a greater risk of cancer. A nightly glass of wine has been common practice for centuries, and if you can stick to one to two drinks max, it might actually confer some health benefits. But if you don't already drink, these findings aren't a reason to start. Talk to your doctor or a registered dietitian if you have questions about your drinking habits. Thanks for watching and eat well.